They're trying to tell us something. They have figured out the formula for chaos. When the clock strikes half past eight, babe, time to head for Chris's house. Hey. Will the sun make it to the next round? Oh, no. Pot of thunder. Let's pot tonight. Come on, baby, let's pot tonight. Uh. Give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Welcome to the show. It is Pot of Thunder, the recognized symbol of excellence in rock and roll podcasting, brought to you by patreon.com slash pot of thunder. Nick told me on the way over, he's showing his feet tonight, so get on there. Get your wallet out. He's taking his feet out for a spin. <clears throat> They're under my knees right now, mm-hmm. but, uh, but not for long. They can be persuaded. Mm-hmm. They'll be in his... Uh, I don't even know what that's called. He's got a professional lighting set up just for his feet. <laughs> one of those feet-shaped rings that goes around and fits on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Five uh, below. I got picked up one of those. Oh, good deal. Yeah. Didn't know they had that there. Oh, yeah. That's Lots good. of... A foot well, ring. <laughs> mm-hmm. Excellent. Yes, welcome to the show. You know me. It's in the way he produces Produces the show You know it never reduces The weekly download I don't know if that's true That's right. It's your buddy Andy, America's little brother, your Indiana dream boy. What was that song based on, Nick? I didn't recognize. No, you, you don't know that one. No. You don't know that. Mm-mm. We've actually brought it up a couple yeah. times in recent memory. It's yeah. uh, Eric Clapton's big '80s hit. It's oh. in the way that you use it from the color of money. Yeah, and okay. then I couldn't get my uh, my little plastic saxophone to sound right on those. It just sounded like a, it sounded like a couple of cars honking at each other. <laughs> Which would have been probably funny. You should have had it. Well, it's in there. Oh, it was in there. Oh, I, I didn't, didn't notice it. Yeah. I didn't notice it either. Played I was again. distracted <laughs> by the uh, phaser flanger, the swirling. Needed it. And... Well, it sounds like that's what he's doing on the original, something along those lines. Yeah, it would have, it would have been of the time, so. Yeah. All right, we'll play it at the end again. Oh, we'll do it again. Look, no, we don't do have to do it now. We'll do it at the end? We'll do it at the end. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's everybody's favorite time of the show. It's that time when Nick gets up. He's going to do it for you. That's right. Look at this. Pollock has entered the program. Nick, welcome to the show. Thank you for the hat. Nick's keeping with his tradition three weeks in a row of putting a hat on my head as he dances his way over when into the studio. When something works so well, mm-hmm. you don't want to end it. Well, welcome to the show, Nick. Thank you for having so you me. Got a co- Fresh haircut, by the way. Oof. Aerodynamic. You, when did you do that? Today? No, it was a few days ago. A few you, days uh, ago. Do you go somewhere to get it no. done, or is it self serve? No, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a domestic uh, agreement. <laughs> yeah, I have the same setup actually. Yeah, yeah, I mean, what's the point? I can't even imagine how much a barbershop, proper barbershop, costs these days. It's not worth it, right? I, I don't know. You go, obviously. Right? Sometimes they, they always mess up. Yeah, sometimes, my, sometimes my wife cuts it. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't go all the time. Yeah, I haven't, been, I haven't paid for a haircut. At least a decade. Yeah, mm. been a while. They always messed up my sideburns anyway. They don't listen. They That's don't, one they thing. They don't listen. You tell them what you want, they do what they want. I had my, I, I was getting married Ugh. like less than a week, and I'm like, I'll take care of the sideburns. Oh, it's, I can do it. No, I'll take care of it. Wah. Dude comes at me with the, with the uh, trimmer. Did you karate chop him? One, one going up this way, one coming down that way. I'm like, okay, I think I can 
grow out a little bit. So oh, so I he can, messed it so up. I, yeah. I'm like, I think I can so, grow out a little bit to even it by, so by this weekend. <laughs> okay, hang on. So not only did he cut them shorter than you wanted, but they were uneven? Yeah. Unbelievable. I thought you, you want, just took you want off the more same than you angle. wanted. Yeah, of course. You want the well, same angle. Well, of course you do. Yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean, you don't, you, what, what universe is that not what you want? <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that guy's... <laughs> <laughs> First of all, you don't get a guy to cut your hair if you're going to pay for it. You, you, if you want yeah. somebody to put her jugs in your back while she's cutting your hair. This and guy, at, at least when she messes it up, you're like, well, at least she had her jugs in my back. I had the next best thing, though. This guy had, every time I went there, Everybody Loves Raymond was on the little TV. So, mm. Well, that explains why they were distracted. But... <laughs> Still, you, you know... Yeah. You need a, a someone. It's like getting a massage. You need someone of the opposite gender to do the do the work on you. Mm. Yeah, I remember. Uh, not as devastating as a wedding, but I remember I was going to a dance. I think it was prom in high school, or it was a homecoming. Whatever, it was some dance in high school. So I went to get a haircut, and I was apprehensive about going to Bo Ricks. So I was like, I don't know about Bo, you know, I, I didn't trust Bo Ricks. Does that even exist I, I don't think so. Gobbled up by the super cuts and good the sport cuts or whatever the fuck it is. Get rid of yeah. them. I'm completely out of that universe. Yeah. So I'm lost, but go ahead. But go ahead. I went to Bo Ricks and I said, oh, you know, I just wanted to get out. It cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to prom this weekend. Want to look sharp in the pictures. This lady damn near buzzed my head and then told me, don't go to college, join the military. After the haircut she gave you? It was all like together. That was all she talked about was, you're a senior in high school? Nah, don't waste your time going to college. You're going to want to go to the military. And then she pretty much buzzed my head. She didn't give you a choice. Mm -mm. Yeah, I know. She gave me the cut and everything. She was all That lady was all about the military. Did she ask you to, to go to lunch with her so she could talk it <laughs> over? Like like they always would the call. recruiters. They would always call your senior year. I never got that. They knew better for I, some they reason. They called yeah. me. I never got that call either. The Navy called me. They didn't want a piece of me. Well, of course the Navy <laughs> called you. We know what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, that's back when uh, Nick had that uh, John Stamos hair. The Navy was calling a couple times a day. <laughs> yeah, they were. That is totally makes sense that that is the arm of the armed forces that called Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Exquisite gay sex on the high seas. They saw the opportunity. That was it. Uh, yeah. Well, we forgot <laughs> to introduce Chris. Immediately to Nick's left. You want him. We got him. I can have it every day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's put your hands together for the breakout star of the podcast, Medium. Chris L's in the house. When I pay to get a haircut, I can have my sideburns be even, okay? Mm, you can have it. Well, you can hope for it, yeah, depending well, on where you go. You're you don't get it, it's time to trash the place. Man, I had a great... This is going back almost like 20 years, but I had a lady who uh, worked at one of the chain places. I can't even remember which one. But I would... Like, she gave me a card of what her schedule was. She was the best because she didn't talk at all. She didn't. That's helpful. She yes. didn't wash my hair. She just cut it. It was done in like five minutes, and it was as good as my hair could look with the hair that the Lord gave me. I'm like, this is all I want. I'm. I'd pay her double instead yeah. of someone who's going to ask me a bunch of questions and <laughs> massage my head and put a towel on a, a hot towel on my face, rub uh, mint conditioner on my head like, I don't want any of this Remember, uh, See, I, was, my hair. I was good with all that I just the chit chat I didn't need I just want to get the hell out of you there know, well, I, that's, uh, that yes but yeah. I, I, I didn't mind the extra treatment I just don't, didn't run didn't want, really want the chit chat yeah did you ever go to Douglas Park uh, oh, barbershop yeah. back when uh, when he would he had that handheld thing oh that, yeah that, like, he, that metal uh, metallic sort of device that had a strap around uh, the back of his hand and I all I could tell is it just vibrated. I think and so. And he would just rub it on your head. And I'm like, is he shaking like the loose hairs off? Like, I don't know what this is for. Was a, Never I found it. He was out. a personal he was massager. Hoping you'd say, can you put that on my balls? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> He's hoping one never, thing leads to another. Never, never figured out why he well, did that. I, every I, time. You just did. I just told you what, what the reason was. Yeah, it had a little hole in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and a little massager on either side. The popcorn underneath. box of massagers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but Bo Rick seems to be the. Uh, haircut chain equivalent of Quiznos yeah. in the sandwich world just vanished gone, gone. yep <sighs> unless it's been uh, rebranded I don't know what the hell like you said sports cuts I don't know what's going on with I, I, that. I'm sure it got gobbled up by some <laughs> other uh, entity yeah because they, they just don't exist anymore I don't think you know I hate to see anyone's business go away but I'm glad about that one yeah I mean I don't feel you bad know. for Bo Ricks being gone after that experience yeah no it's I, I, I'm with you on that, Bo Rick himself actually is a is a patron so <laughs> oh sorry about mind. that sorry Bo yeah Bo I, I hope you come back oh Bo <clears throat> sorry we lost you Ugh. I just had a burp and then no one talked one of those moments <laughs> it's counting on one someone, of you guys someone to say cover something up the shot when I was burpy yeah but anyway, I don't know, you're moving around like you had something going, something to say. Yeah, I was trying to get off the mic and get this belch out, but whatever. Um, so Nick, get the foil out. Where's the foil? I don't what? I didn't. I'm sorry. I'll be damned. No foil it today. It's kind of rushed this week, so I wasn't able to. Uh... I'll be damned. Sorry. <laughs> Involuntary diet. Yeah, it's beach season. You guys getting ready for that? I'm. I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it. It won't be good, but I'm. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time it was good? <laughs> it was good. To, When's the last time it was good at the to, beach or what? When's the last time beach season was good? When you felt uh, confident in uh, you know how you looked in your swimsuit? Not even the time I went when I was 18. No, no, it was before that. No, it was never. It was never. It was just you probably didn't think about it. When not you even, were not even at 18 age. was it like, yeah, you know what? I'm killing I'm, it over I'm here. I'm killing it at the beach. I'm pulling off the beach right now. Yeah, I am the one everybody is uh, is keeping one eye on at least just to see what I'm doing. No, nope. that was never the case. No. Well, what about you? That's not how you were perceived by the Navy, I'll <laughs> tell you that. Yeah, the Navy was all yeah, over the Navy was very confident in your uh, stripped-to-the-waist look. Would have seen plenty of beach. Yeah, you mm-hmm. would have. The last time I was lean in a swimsuit was probably 17, 20, 2017. So. Damn. Pfft. It's been a while. Not super that's long, not but the, that's not long at all. Yeah, that's you pretty kidding? recent. But I, it's, I keep thinking I can get there that's again. That's within the last ten years. No, no it doesn't get easier. It doesn't. The, the older you get, it doesn't me. get easier for sure. But also, I have no motivation. I don't give a damn anymore. Well, I know that's a big that's, part yeah. of it. But if you get so far gone that you decide you do give a damn, it's pretty fucking hard <laughs> yeah, to get yeah. back. But it's, in it, fact, it's it's pretty impossible. But where you're at, where you've entered into right now is the best. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's like, do I want to be dieting and exercising or not? I'll go with not. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't really care about the outcome. What do I care yeah. about have you been to the beach? Do you care what these people think? Uh, yeah, exactly. Why? Well, yeah, bunch of subhumans. Last time, last time I was at one well, of Chris's he, you words. Know, yeah. <laughs> last time I was at the dunes, I wanted everybody else to leave. <laughs> everybody wow. I saw, I'd rather them not have been there. <laughs> that's another thing. That's one of the la- among the last places you'll find me is at a beach for <laughs> any reason. Yeah. It's like I don't want to be around people. Yeah. And like. You know, you you, dr- you drive up Highway 12 here on like Fourth mm-hmm. of July, and there people are, are walking a mile to get to the beach because they can't even park. <laughs> and they're walking there. walking like, past you. This is yeah. fun, you know. Yeah, looks like the, uh, the you know the Civil War just ended, and all the troops are <laughs> walking, walking home. home. It's like that know? like that one Twilight Zone. Exactly, episode. <laughs> that's exactly what it looks like. It's like this is fun for you. All the ghosts are walking. Yeah, past yes, you. yeah. <laughs> Beach ain't happening. Are you still a, a, a occasional visitor to Munster Pool? Yeah, I haven't gone yet this year, but we go a couple times. You a a year. Rough crowd over there. Or? That's all right. That's fine. It's too expensive. What it's is it? Ten dollars oh, a re- person. Oh fuck! And you live in Munster. That's if you live here. Try yeah. going. 
And also, you they don't, don't need a passport to get in if you don't live in Muncie. <laughs> you have to have your real ID. Oh, you have you to, a real to, to ID. Check your credit. <laughs> Yeah. Run it, run an Equifax on you. Yeah. They run it, and that automatically makes your score come down. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, yeah, Every it's time. a hard, hard pull, <laughs> as we say in the industry. <laughs> That's a hard credit pull. Yeah, <laughs> um, I was gonna say they also make it difficult because you have to, uh, like, if you want to get a season pass, it's not like oh, it's a no brainer. You have to go like maybe ten or eleven times to get your money's worth out wow. of it. It's like ah. I want to do that. What are they thinking? Bastards. They don't make it easy on you. And then they willy nilly with the days they're closed. Ah, we're gonna close now. They just put a Facebook thing out. Yeah, it's two o'clock. We're you gonna close. Yeah, fuck that. Can I real quick tell my frustrating monster pool story? Of course. Went there a couple years ago with the family. Mm-hmm. There were about two hours, two to three, maybe hours left before it was like the end. We just yeah. kind of decided to go for a little bit mm-hmm. which ends at six which is a bullshit we, time to end by the way yeah during the summer yeah come on it's not dark till after nine and it's a heated pool like it'll be yeah. fine it's not gonna get cold well, yes of so course. so we get there just paid yep. literally several steps <laughs> hey, away you know you know from say. the counter yeah. we're walking in manager comes running up to the ticket booth yep i'm well within earshot Basically, he says a kid barfed in the pool. <laughs> Everybody, we're um, nobody's allowed in it for I don't know. It was a half hour. It's a huge chunk of time considering we didn't have much time left. No refunds. And I'm like, <laughs> no we refunds. literally just walked. No in. refunds. And I was like, all right, we'll wait for the barf to get cleaned up. I guess some kid barfed in the pool. I've been there when that's happened before. They clear everyone out. Oh god. I'd rather just go swim in it. <laughs> I mean, with how much yeah, I with trust the, the chlorine. With how much you'd spend to get into that place. <laughs> I'll swim around the bus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've played I've paid less to lay in bar <laughs> in my life. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trusting the chlorine yes. today. It's gonna do its magic. And back to your policy of no refunds. That this is how you get your teeth knocked out, buddy. Yeah. Bunch of okay. shit. You wanna die on this hill today? This is what this is going to be your legacy. I didn't give any refunds. Okay, enjoy your funeral down the street, <laughs> right a, right across the yeah, street is the right, hospital. We'll just drag you over to and the Kish funeral. And, and, and Kish was right there. Right? Yeah. yeah, yep. Piece yeah, of well, cake. I'll kill you and take you over there. <laughs> the deluxe treat. I'll kill you and drop you off. Yeah. Before six o'clock, exactly. all yes. before six o'clock. Exactly. I'll kill you. I'll take you to the and emergency I'll barf room. Barf on your corpse. How's that? <laughs> They'll pronounce you dead. Then I'll drive you to the funeral yeah. home. And, and that's it. And that'll be yeah. before the last adult swim even happens. Yeah. That's the other thing Which I was going to mention. The dumbest thing ever, Chris. I don't know if you've ever heard this one, but at that pool, at Munster Pool, every like I think it's on the forty-five of yeah. every hour. It's at least ten, 10 minutes. And maybe it's fifteen. 15 is it's it? It's fifteen minutes of adult swim every. 45 whatever so like you know whatever 11 45 12 45 1 45 the last 15 minutes it's, of every hour all children have to get out so the adults can just they, they had that at the community pool where i grew up adult uh maybe it makes sense in some community but like the way munster pool is half of it is uh like a splash pad right that right, starts right, at right. zero inches and gra- it's like a beach like yeah, gradually yeah, goes. Yeah. Yeah. So all the kids have to get out of there so the adults can swim laps 40 feet away or whatever, 80 feet away. And there's yeah, 15 there's, minutes. That's Usually all but yes. three of them that take it. That's the other thing. It. Yeah. Who's there by themselves? There's no adults I, if there. If you're in a retirement community yeah. in Florida, then okay. Go for it. But yeah. It's, but if... <laughs> It's just dumb. If everybody's just there with their kids anyway, and then you got a, then you got crying kids. You got kids want, trying to run back in there. Mm-hmm. They should just say, okay, the uh, dive, the deep diving area here. That's going to be the lap pool just, for just 15 abandon minutes. the oh, whole idea, yeah. or yes. go to the YMCA or something. You don't do laps at a laps. community pool. Well, yeah. <laughs> Greg Luganus, what are you doing? You Wrong guy. Wait, he's a diver. <laughs> <laughs> Michael oh, Phelps, still though, you yeah, know, doing you know. The, Laps. The triple Lindy. You don't want <laughs> any kids uh, in the landing area. Yeah. It's, it's, it's it's a perfect storm of assholery by everybody involved. Yeah, yeah. it's super. Let's, Mark- stop, let's stop talking about this because everybody is tuned out at this point. Mark Spitz so. coming in the pool. Yeah. 
<laughs> Dan spits in the deep end. Christ. <laughs> in the splash pad. <laughs> Oh, yes. Welcome to the show. We're going to get into business here. (laughs) Whose turn is it? Is it my turn? I think it is. Okay. It's my turn to pick from the listener submission list. Um, Are you doing it? I'm doing it. it Yeah, we're going to do it. And you didn't wear that shirt not to do it. It's a loud shirt, isn't it? Not happy with it. No, not happy. With it's it. a loud shirt, but you shouldn't be unhappy with no? it. Why okay. are you unhappy with it? I don't know. I think it's time for a, a wardrobe change or something. I don't know. You ever look in your closet and you're like, I'm not, I'm not feeling these items that I bought a couple of years ago. <laughs> no, yeah, for yeah, sure. That's how I'm feeling. Today. Usually, I'm like, can I wear this again and have nobody notice? <laughs> today, tomorrow, the next day. <laughs> yeah, I do that too. Okay, let's pull. The thing, Nick. Get the Chicago. Pull the thing. Pull the thing. Uh, what am I supposed to do when that happens? You're supposed to say yes, whatever this first song is. Oh, my God. What, what is we're... this? <laughs> oh, no. Why is this on here? Let me see. Uh, the number's number uh, 1050. 1050. 1050. It's on here twice. Um... Oh, rocks. Uh, <clears throat> man. So this is one where um, I'm going to put it in the hopper. I'll tell you that first. But I'll say this. Uh, not a band I think I would ever listen to in my life intentionally. I, never, I know I never have, but and I don't wor- foresee but it But it may happen. work here. But maybe it's time to see what I'm missing. But you know the band? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay. And, and it might... We'll it put might, it in the hopper. Yeah, it might spark a spirited discussion. That's so it's what in the hopper. Want. That's what we want. Ultimately, that's what people want. So. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Nick, give it another pull, would you? Yeah. Yes. Ding. Ding. It's ready. Uh, what we'll do we see got? if it is. I don't know. Yeah. Andy might be disappointed in some of you's. Number 775. Let's see what we got here. Hmm. Oh, I don't even know what this is. Let me see. Look Careful com- with that. Yeah, I don't know this artist. <laughs> now that doesn't uh, that can't can't roll the dice like that. That doesn't mean I'm that- stepping in and yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Especially when you saw a promise in the yeah. first one, you can't roll the dice like that. Yeah. In that case, I'm gonna bushwick this one, but it stays in the listener submission list. Move along to the next. Oh, man. Third and final pull. Let's see if we can beat the first one. Nice neck. That's beautiful. Number 607. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Stinks on ice, huh? I, I, it's not for me, so I'm going to go with the first one. <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> it's, not, it's not for any of us, though. Is that a nice way to say it? Some other people, hey, you know what? In most cases, people put songs on here because they like them or they have conspired to uh, cause some kind of outrage. That's happened before also. But, um, so you're going to go to number one? I'm going to go with number one. I like it. I, I like the idea that it's something that you would not elect to listen to on your own. Never in my life. I like I that. like this. Uh, it's intriguing. Yeah. But first, hit it. Oh, wow. Abemus <laughs> Papa. <laughs> Time for pull stuff. Yeah, that pull stuff. Here is some pull stuff. Time for pull stuff. All right, so your last pull gives us the Pope stuff segment this week from the year 607. Okay. February 19th, 6.07. I was, would ask you, Nick, if you knew what the Pope was, but I, I'm, it's not clear to me if what who the Pope was here, so I wouldn't be able to... Oh, I see. Well, no, actually, I would. It, it is. So do you, do you have a, a guess? Oh, goodness. It's um, a strange name, I'll put it that way. I'll go with uh, Anacletus. Did uh, you get it? Good guess, not right. Oh, okay. Um, That's probably too late for an anecdote. Yeah, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna pronounce this Italian style. I'm gonna tap into my inner black man and uh, 
pronounce it that way. Because that's why I think it's pronounced. So here we go. February 19th, 607. The vacancy that has existed on the papal throne since the death last year, or the previous year, of Sabinian hmm. ends with the election of a Rome-born deacon of the Catholic Church. Pope Bonifaci III is appointed as the 66th Pope, but dies the same year. Oh, no. Now, I've heard that name pronounced Boniface, but I wouldn't doubt that there's a, another pronunciation yeah. like or that. Or Boneface, as he was known uh, to his buddies <laughs> so very in thin, college. Very thin man. When he was in body count, that was his Yeah, right, exactly. Played bass right, in body yeah, count. Right. <laughs> he used to come out during Megadeth shows as yes, the mascot. exactly, right. <laughs> That but works. I see it as Bonifaci. That's not a bad pronunciation. So, could be, but boy, it died the same year or two. So there was Just a, like Paul Stanley said, right? And, and Sabinian. <laughs> that I've, yeah. But you don't hear that one. Very Isn't that often. the uh, the uh, apparatus where a, a dildo is <laughs> a, a, affixed to a saddle oh of some sort <laughs> from the Howard Stern show? Yeah, right, or just you know, or in life, but I yeah, mean, made just, famous by the yeah, Howard. Yeah, that was Stern a type show. of symbol. <laughs> or that, yeah. <laughs> the Sabinian. The crash symbol made mm-hmm. famous by Pope Sabinian. <laughs> All right. Well, there's your Pope stuff for this week. All right. My choice was, what was it, 1,050? It's been submitted twice. What's the, uh, what, what do a Sabinian symbol and a Sabinian mounted dildo have in common? You can ride them both. Oh, oh, that's nice. And we could use one. Right, we could use one right now. Yeah. yeah. Rim shot. <laughs> On it tonight, literally. <laughs> so there we go. All right. So let me tell you something about the song I chose before I uh, reveal exactly what it <laughs> you is. Said two uh, fools put it on there. Well, I said it's been submitted twice. You'd think two fools put it on there, but the same, same guy. Oh, I, li- I, I, <laughs> I like when that happens, though. It's fun. I submitted about a month and a Cause, half Because I would imagine you forget. There's, you forget. There, there's no confirmation email I'm, that, no. that I've ever heard of. And that's okay. I'm not mad about it, but it is funny. It is funny when it happens. It's funny when it's like a year later. Yeah, but this is a month and a half. A month and a half. Is... This There might have been some, uh, some sort of... Uh, numbing uh, <laughs> numbing solution involved and, and you know, the comments are pretty different too so he left a comment with each perhaps a, perhaps like a model plane enthusiast <laughs> <laughs> well we'll find out in a moment here um yeah I, I don't really have anything else to say about it because I've never heard it to my knowledge unless I have and I <coughs> it's going to be one of those where I say oh okay I guess I've heard this somewhere I love this I don't think I'll say that okay but, um yeah i think that's it for now let me pull up the uh, information because i already forgot the name of it Jeez. well i don't know i just read it i'm like yeah okay all right let's turn the microphone over to chris jericho all right hello this one's called china grove oh okay. uh-huh. <laughs> the captain and me by the band the doobie brothers my my uh-huh. What do you guys you, think of you that? You had to have heard this. Yeah, you've heard. You've, you've There's heard. There's no way you could have avoided it. The the, oh. the 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 very beginning, you'll be like, okay, yeah, I've heard it. Okay, it doesn't uh, ring a bell in name, but you know, we'll see. I'll All let right. you know when I hear it. I'll be truthful. Um, and also, this was submitted twice by our friend Chris Camarado. Oh, uh, okay. Chris, a month and a half apart. Yep. So I'll tell you what he said uh, in both comments. First comment says, a straight-ahead rocker from a classic band that is yet to be featured on the show. This could also lend itself to a discussion of the time Rerun yes. got conned into bootlegging the Doobie yes, Brothers on what's happening. Maybe this episode was on a month and a half interval. <laughs> could have been. He's like, oh, I don't think I've submitted this. All right, And a month and a half later, Chris says, another band that is yet to be <laughs> featured on the podcast, this song rocks. Bonus if you can work in some discussion about when the Doobie Brothers were on What's Happening. Which Doobie you be, in quotes. Is that uh, a line a rerun that he quote? said it I don't to know. Him? Yeah. Something one of them I'm said not, it, I haven't right? seen uh, that episode or any episode of What's Happening in way too it's, long. I've seen it in probably the last year or two. Yeah, it, and, it's been uh, a while for me. Yeah, he's got like the uh, tape machine under his shirt, I, right. I believe. Bootlegging, bootlegging live it. recordings. 
basically threatened into doing it. You ever do that, Chris? No. You never bootlegged a concert? No. Andy, you ever did it? I no, I know Andy. Effort. I know Andy got a couple tapes, right? Well, I don't know if it qualifies as bootlegging. Because you didn't like, try to sell it I don't, Well, I don't think anyone cared either. Like, we'd go to the Fireside Bowl with a tape recorder yeah, and record cares. a beer. Yeah, so I never went to, like, you know, uh, United Center. Yeah, and did that, but... I had a bunch from Alkaline like Trio, right? Was one of them. Did we? I don't even remember Over that. Over in Wicker Park, I thought we. I thought oh, we, we had, recorded that. Thought too. we did, had an audio recording of that. Wow, I don't remember yeah. that. We should find that and put it on uh, YouTube. Probably doesn't sound that great. Yeah, yeah you're that right. nobody cares. <laughs> <anymore. laughs> yeah, interesting. Right. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah that was pretty. big. There were, was there two of those shows. There were big shows in Wicker Park. Yeah, it was wild. Over like, here. Yeah, yeah, which is like ninety nine, two thousand. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I didn't know that. They had a, it's like national bands playing yeah. there. Yeah, a lot of like the, the punk ska uh, bands. Punk, yeah. Some of the bigger ones, I would say, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was a Ben Mollen joint. That's why. Yeah. All right. So um, I know very little about the band. Yeah. And I know really nothing besides a couple of their hits. But. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I do know this one. I mean, I'm I, I, at least I'm familiar with it. Well, as people are pointing out, there's a uh, ear of the band before Michael McDonald joined on keyboards and vocals, and then after. Oh, he's not. Team. He's not on this. He's one? not on this. This ah, is pre Michael. Start over. Back to the <laughs> list. <laughs> I don't hate Michael McDonald era doobies as much as most people. I thought it was fine. It didn't. Uh, it wasn't a Peter Cetera esque completely removing of the genitals as as is often <laughs> alleged. Um, but uh, no, this is pre uh, Michael McDonald. Uh, Tom Johnston, guitar pl- guitarist, is the, is the lead vocalist here. So were they a successful band at this oh, point? Oh, hell yeah. So they were a big band, and then they brought in Michael. Yes. Ma- that's an interesting thing yeah, to that, do. It's not I, like, I would almost think he was in it at first. Yeah. You know, one of those things. Or oh. they like struggled with, one, you know, they had an album that didn't really do anything, and then they brought him in and started kicking ass. But no, they were... Oh, they had, they, I mean, they wow. were big. They had a lot of big hits. Uh, you know, uh, Blackwater, have you heard that? I don't know. I've, have I, Nick? <laughs> I don't. I don't know it by the name. I don't know any honest. other songs. Oh, black water, keep on rolling, Mississippi moon. You've never heard that? I think I've heard that one. Yeah, yeah. that was one of their bigger hits. They had. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. Uh, See, I get James Gang songs mixed up with. Listen Doobie to Brothers the music. Songs. That was a big one for them. I don't know how you guys could have avoided the Doobie Brothers, even even just stumbling past it on a radio station. I, I mean, they were. Yeah, FM radio, 70s, album-oriented rock staples, and this one was one of the bigger ones. Yeah, I mean, I could see us, uh, like you said, maybe scrolling past, but I don't think we ever would have listened to any of those stations for an extended period of time. Jesus because... is just all right, Nick, you being a religious fella. I've heard that. Father, you, see, you seem to be like a religious man. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Not ringing a bell. That's from the jerk. Oh, from the jerk with the cat juggling scene. <laughs> um, I've, I've I know that title, but I don't know that I'd know the song. Yeah, they they was this is yeah not a band that I ever pursued. Mm-mm. You know, you, you hear about them, and there there are a few '70s bands like that, like the I and I don't. Were there there are multi? Uh, um, are there multiple guys in this band who would take lead vocals? Is that is that correct, or um, is it one of those kind of like an Eagles kind of a configuration? Not yeah, but not as like not as evenly distributed. Let's okay. put it that way. Um, blanking until, on the other guitarist's name until but, McDonald uh, came in. Well, yeah, because I mean he he essentially replaced the previous lead singer was tom johnson they just played different instruments mm, so. okay was michael mcdonald somebody before he joined the doobie brothers oh uh, yeah i mean he did a lot of session work with steely dan i mean you can hear his vocals on a lot of steely dan stuff and played keyboards and some of their studio stuff and mm. so he was he was he was known amongst musicians but chris no. camarado says skunk baxter uh, 
Yeah, he was. I mean, he he's been in, in the band. It's, it's the other guy who's still in the band now, the with the long straight hair. I'm totally blanking on his name, but he's been in since the beginning. Okay. I mean, they've just had. I mean, I think the only constant has been this other guy, Pat. Uh, what the fuck is his first name? Is Pat? I don't know. <laughs> But everybody else, I mean, it's been a just a rotating, you know. Tom Johnson's back in the band now. But okay. Yeah. So. All I, right. I'm it's, a fan. I had Best of the Doobies on eight track. It was constantly in the player. I mean, it, in terms of best of collections, it's one of the better ones out there. Um, the Best of the Doobies. There's, mm. You can't go wrong with anything on there, which is the point of a best of album but right. some are have some dicey inclusions here and there not that one uh, chris has pat simmons that's it yep, yep. No, no relation to gene he, no he clarified for no us. no relation to gene <laughs> so pat simmons was not born pat klein so no relation to gene so I'm, uh, am i uh, incredibly naive by thinking there's another explanation for the uh the band name other than the obvious oh like is it not about smoking a doobie there's a different no word? i mean am i naive to even think that there might be a different explanation for it I no know. i, I th- i've i've seen the dan rather interview with them on access tv and they pretty much confirmed that it's yes it's joint related yeah. so hmm. Well then, no secret no meaning secret or meaning. Yeah. chicanery there. It is Not an na- o- they are named an, after a joint. An homage so. to uh, '50s doo-wop vocal groups or no. something no. like that. Just, just some brothers, no, no who, sh- shooby doobie or anything like that. Brothers who enjoyed a doobie. There you go. That's it. Are any of them actually brothers? I don't believe so. No, not one of those bands. No. Okay. They were also one of those bands that had two drummers. I don't know if they have that currently, but like, not a drummer and a percussionist, but like two drum sets on stage, which I never understood. That is weird. It's not a percussion, like a yeah. The dead had it. The, the, the worst offenders were thirty eight special. Completely unnecessary to have two drummers. They're playing the same fucking thing. It's gonna be hard. Why too. do you trot around an extra guy? Extra got to pay, yeah, extra gear. That, that made no sense mm. to me. Makes I mean, things more difficult. I mean, at least the the dead, uh, the, the two drummers were doing something a little different, uh, but whatever. I, I know at some point in the, mi- in the at least in the middle period, they had two drummers on stage. Wow. So. All right. Any thoughts on this before we get started? Um, no, not really. I, it, I I have a comment, but I'd rather hear some of it first before I make that comment. Probably a good idea. Okay. Well, this is not... This is three minutes and 17 seconds. For some reason, I was expecting this to be a lot longer. So, that's no, cool. this is a radio hit, you know? It's okay. a single, so... Okay. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with China Grove. <laughs> Of course, <laughs> yeah. See, yeah. there it is. Yes. Yeah, like that's probably in a. There, there's no in way hundred commercials. Yeah, but like a car it, right. dealer. One or whatever. way or the other, there's no way you could have avoided this it, it, it living on the planet yeah. for as long as you have. Heard it at the carnival, just walking past a ride. Like it's just oh, something yeah. that you would absorb through osmosis of life yeah. of being outside. Or you know, you're you're at a stoplight and some guy in a chopper rolls up next to you and he's got Doobie Brothers crank and I mean, you just can't avoid it. Yeah, yep. and that's one of the iconic guitar intros of all time of classic rock. So yeah, yeah, in- enjoyable, uh, good sound, enjoyable delay. Yeah, on there. Yeah, the Doobies that are solid, cool. man. I mean, they had some great songs and. Like I said, that best up of collections got a mix of Johnston era, uh, McDonald era. It's all good. I, I like I said, I, I I never got the the aversion to Michael McDonald. I get it that it was like a jarring change 
for people who are really into the band but in terms of the the material at least when it, at the outset I, I i admit that by the time they got to minute by minute it was pretty pretty full-on yacht rock at that point but uh right when he joined they had some good stuff uh, it keeps you running is a great tune hmm. um taking it to the streets is a great tune i mean when he first joined it was fine and then they i think they toppled a little too far over into the soft rock category Huh. Come on, you. Uh, one of the better uh, dual hi hat hits uh, this side of the uh, Stroke Month theme, uh, <laughs> courtesy of Nick. Um, I was enjoying the bass line quite a bit. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of the original bass player's name, but they had Willie Weeks joined in uh, uh, throughout their um, history. I mean, they've had some great players come come through the ranks, like. Like Camarado said, Skunk Baxter, uh, you know, renowned studio guy. I think he' pretty sure he played on some Steely Dan stuff. I mean, if you played on Steely Dan yeah. uh, albums, your your credibility is pretty high up there as a player. And you so. probably know Chevy Chase too. Probably <laughs> do. Yes. Why is that? Because he was like their, one of their original drummers. What? I yeah. did not know that. Is that true? He was he was officially a band member of Steely Dan, if I'm not mistaken. I've never heard this. I haven't either. Well, look it up. Stick with me. Nick's going to teach us something. He was fired for doing a Pratt fall (laughs) into the drum kit uh, on stage (laughs) once, and uh, that didn't go over well. I think there are some early recordings. I think he sings one of like the very early recording. He's the vocalist. I've never heard this before. Watch the chat's going to blow up. Everybody has exited the chat. (laughs) Yeah. They've all yeah. left the chat. You've really just gone too far with the Chevy Chase. It's true. Uh, it's all true. Huh. You said he was a drummer? I didn't I even thought, know he was I, a drummer. I thought he was a drummer, and uh, I'm pretty sure he's a lead vocalist on some sort of old, obscure song of theirs. Of Steely Dan. Yeah. Uh, I, it, if you can <laughs> confirm it, fine, but I've never heard that. Oh. So. I'm sure someone out there in the chat, or is it's gonna complete back me bullshit, and then it's just not true. I so. see. I see the googling, googling. David McCowan. Let's see. What, well, we'll play a little bit more, and we'll come back to. Yeah, you. exactly. When you hear someone say San Antonio, are you just like, okay, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Got <No>. it. <laughs> you don't. You don't like. You're not you know. in the city shorthand, no. so to speak. <laughs> not at all. You don't like Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, that's okay. Okay, you no, like that, that one. one's allowed. So like, where do you live, Andy? I, I just moved into Mons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Or I'm living in the stir now. Yeah, San that's where I the live. Stone. <laughs> not a fan of that, huh? I don't care for it. San Antonio. <laughs> Not saying anything bad about this song, but that's just one you hear yeah, from time to time. Turns it off. Turns it off for you. What yeah. are some other examples that we can? I have. Of? There's one on the tip of my tongue. I just can't. I can't. Uh, really? Saint Louis. Do you okay. like that? Mm, no, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> San Fran. No, I not don't like that. Not a fan. No. No. You, so you 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 uh, complete names of uh, cities. What about Philly and? in honor of the Caruso's. I don't like it. You're not a fan of it? <laughs> I don't like it. How about the D for Detroit? That's okay. I'll let, I'll let it slide because it's a totally different nickname. It's not... It's not a shortened, it's not truncated Deech. version of Deech. the... Deech. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. go to Deech. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I, I like the uh, just completely irrational hatred for something believe it's me i'm, I'm totally on board with that <laughs> there's some i i know there's one another one that yeah really there, annoys there's me one I can't that's think of it right there's now. one that's playing in my head yeah just a snippet and i can't i can't we'll flush it out any further we'll come back to it uh 
I don't know. Oh, it's it's a nickname also, but I don't care for Shy Town very much. When yeah, I don't like that. it either. I, I I cringe when I see that there's a TV show called The Shy. The Shy. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm, dumb, I'm like, yeah. don't do it's, that. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's I'm a, with you. I'm that's about point. enough. Yeah. Haven't we suffered enough? Okay, I've got a report back here. <sighs> David McCowan says he played in a band with guys who went on to form Steely Dan. He was like the, the 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 top guys, or just a few random guys. I don't know. We'll have to get back to that. Point. But he was their drummer in college before they were big. Is also what I'm seeing from Fielding Fowler. So and, and there is there is some sort of song that he's lead, lead vocalist on. Mm. All right. He he supposedly has perfect pitch. I've heard that. Where, too. How and do when you, you know have, all this about when, <laughs> when you, And when you have perfect pitch, the only thing it's good for is telling everybody that you have perfect pitch. Exactly. Yep. Um, I thought I, everybody knew this. Yeah, I have perfect pitch. I, I didn't know. Did all you know this. he has perfect pitch? Yeah. See, I have a hard time listening to to a lot of music because I have perfect pitch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I Which can't. I would imagine that's true, and that would be torture to like listen to stuff that is. That's where you, where you get at this bullshit that, that came into the lexicon from American Idol. It's like, oh, it sounds pitchy to me. It's mm. like, it sounded fine to me, as long as you're not yelling into the mic, which they all eventually ended up doing, all these contestants. They used to annoy me when um, I would share something that we recorded as a band with someone. And oh, I could say that it was usually with someone who was also in a band, whose band was inferior to our band. <laughs> Oh my! Well, that's a short list. Well, not really if you think about it. Because um, how many bands like just didn't uh, put any, didn't well, even try anything? You know what I mean? True. Like but... it would be the equivalent. Of, excuse me, the equivalent of like a bedroom dickhead type. And they'd be like, oh, you know, I think you guys are singing off key. I can't really listen to them. I'm like, okay, go do. <laughs> so- Let me hear anything that you're doing. And I wasn't like, dude, this is awesome. But like, hey, uh, check this out. We uh, right. we did this. Yeah, no, I get guys, that. I get. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, people who've never done anything. Uh, yeah, acting like they're authorities on it is yeah definitely bottom of the barrel. You could just say nothing, or if like I asked your opinion, that's right. a different thing. You know, hey, do you did I did this note sound right? No, I don't think so, man. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'll try to. I was thinking about that earlier. People offer up their opinions when it isn't specifically asked for. Yeah, nobody wants to hear it. Yeah, like can can you get your oscilloscope out, please, and check the frequency (laughs) of this note? Yeah, please. No, nobody's asking you to do that. Singing off key. Shut up. Especially given the type of music, I don't even think there was a key. (laughs) <laughs> there was no such thing. Well, exactly. Anything was on key. It's just barking. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's stupid. Three guys barking at the same time with right. music that's all over the place. I'm, I, I don't know. I'm man. told that is true about Chevy Chase. That's the, that's the comment I just received. That he has perfect pitch. <laughs> I think everything that's been said about him so far on all this right, podcast. All right. Well, I'll defer to you. You seem to know a lot about Chevy Chase. Okay, here's is he says, circumcised or no? <laughs> Do you know this about him? Uh, you know what? I, you could almost see it in the uh, You Can Call Me Al video, but no, actually, not quite. He actually has two foreskins. <laughs> I don't know He's why. He's got eight skins. <laughs> <laughs> he has perfect foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that about him? He had a perfect her? circumcision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, let me go back to the chat real quick. Uh, Perfectly level. <laughs> Jackie Hardigan says, I mean, after the Nick Menza debacle, you can understand our skepticism. Oh, come on. And we no, do make up Jackie. rumors. Nick Menza the pedophile? That's what it says. That's here. been, that's been cleared Romero. up many times. He's not. He's not. That's he never right. was. That was way error. back. That's yeah. what, like, and the, episode these, three These are people putting like their that. fingers in their ears and not listening to the uh, <laughs> to, to what was said afterwards. The retraction. Let's, let's just. This is like 11 years ago. Nick, <laughs> Nick got confused about something and said that. It's not true at all. Rest in peace, Nick Menza. Didn't do anything wrong. No. But. Well, retractions don't resonate with No, me. they <laughs> don't. <clears throat> There's no point even making them. It's, it's a waste of breath. Just dig your hole deeper. Yeah, that's exactly. really all that's left to do. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, it says the guy's names were Becker and Fagan. Yeah, you know? I mean, those are the, the two guys. Okay, yeah, there you have it. Dan. Okay, I never knew that. So there you go. Chevy Chase, Steely Dan. No idea. 
Hmm. All right. right. Let's keep going. This, uh, the comment I was going to make, and I will make it because I, because I was, uh, yeah, it, it was the song I was thinking, at least the same kind of groove and everything. Um, if you would have asked me who this is, not really being a Doobie Brothers, you know, fan, really not knowing that much about them, I would say this, this, uh, has some similarities to Fool for the City. This could be oh. Fog Hat. Yes. And that's probably who I would have guessed it was if you had just played the song for me. Yeah. I would... Any number of those bands from that time that I never listened to, but I knew the names of for some reason, like Foghat. You said 38 Special earlier. There's a few of those well, bands. Well, 38 Special, a little more Southern rock than uh, Doobie Brothers. Doobie I, Brothers are more California. Mm, I believe you, but I wouldn't have known, no, especially I, I, at the time. Like right. when I heard this, if I, like I said, oh, you're at the carnival or something and you hear it, I'm like, oh, that's probably one of those bands in that group that i don't know but i've seen sure. their logos right. or whatever yeah fog had of course had a little more balls to them that british boogie woogie uh, approach to it mm. fog hat what's uh what's the main for slow ride is the main fog hat song yeah right? of course well, yeah i mean full for the cities right up there too. it's up there yeah up and there. that's the one that i think has a lot of comparison to this song i, I that's I, i've never noticed that before but i think you're spot on with that uh comparison i don't remember if we've talked about this before and who knows if we'll ever get the episode hopefully not but <laughs> slow ride has the biggest fall off from cool part to shitty part in the history of music <laughs> oh we got from the main it part to the, the verse. verse yeah it's just like oh what is this when it goes to the verse with the tom toms and like and then that weird bass line yeah bum, 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 bum. It's it's terrible like a, yeah what are they doing? I, I don't disagree with you there it's 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 worse on the studio version the That's, live version okay, is a little i don't know the live bad. version but yeah the studio version it's like what the hell's going on here well fog hat live is one of the great 70s live albums and it's a single album which is somewhat of a rarity but it's it's definitely easier to take on the live version but i totally understand what you're saying there yeah you gotta gotta uh, respect them though for having one of the all-time great merch items uh trucker hats that simply said fog on the front did they really <laughs> really oh yeah that's good that's awesome was that more recent or was that way no, back that was back in the day oh, that's great it was those trucker hats with like the p padded front yeah. panels and just in just just boring bold letters fog like <laughs> iron on letters. it wasn't even their logo like just no, a section of their no, logo just no. ran just the basic <laughs> font i like uh, that yeah you gotta respect them for that huh. i like a little sense of humor in the sure. band What would you call that effect on the, the? I guess that'd be the lead guitar, the guitar that's in the left more. It's just like a fuzz. And he's pl he's playing more Probably like just straight up. <laughs> Could be the Ray Davies. I uh, took a razor and cut the cut the woofer <laughs> um, <laughs> to make it buzz. To make it buzz. No, that's uh, cool because it's like you know it's fuzzy, it's distorted, but yeah. it's not you know it's not heavy, but it's cool. It could be something like that. I don't know. Yeah, fuzz pedal or like an overdriven Fender amp, an amp that's not really known for its dirty tones like a Marshall would be. It's okay. just like a, a, a amp right on the edge of breakup. Hmm. You like that. I like huh? it. I like it because, like I said, I'm, I don't know, maybe it's just from hearing too much, but I feel like everything is so uh, heavy. That's more modern. 
Well, and, sure. And then it all just kind of becomes the same. And I feel like you could do cool stuff with this. Bring it back. Someone. I'm sure somebody is. Somebody has. But it's, I don't know. It stands out to me because you don't it's hear it anymore. Kind of a less is more, right? It's yeah. Not, it's not perfectly distorted. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I guess it's, you know, like, I guess Revolution has that crazy, like, uh, really super fuzzy sound. Yeah, but, the, but like, that and the kink sound is a little more abrasive. This has got yeah. some smoothness. It's yeah. got the right balance of smoothness and edge to it. So, yeah. my opinion, anyway. But I like it. Nice. You don't hear Andy uh, complimenting guitar tones no. often. This is kind it's the of the first a, one I like. It's a revolutionary <laughs> one. <laughs> and you it. came into this episode not thinking you're going to like anything about yeah. it. Yep. See? There you go. Already Becoming like a convert. Yeah. I don't know. It's <clears throat> we've talked about this, you know, if there's 563 episodes, we've probably talked about it 200 times. But it's exhausting listening to some music. It is. The way that everything and, is compressed and, and it's just full on every frequency is mm-hmm. filled up the whole time. It's like we, I don't, Yeah, we've talked about I don't want to hear it. No, when this, I hear something like this, I'm like yeah, this Okay, is this isn't like you know nicely recorded. Um Ted Templeman, I believe, mm. is the producer who, really? who worked on the uh uh early or mo- almost all of the Van Halen all of the Van Halen albums of the Roth era. Not with not the most recent one, but uh, yeah, pretty sure. Let me just confirm. Yeah, Ted Templeman. Interesting. Hmm. Good producer, you know. In that, then I'll butter him up a little bit after trashing him last week. But in that Tom Worman mode of uh, hmm. knew how to uh, record bands of the classic rock era. Yeah, for sure. Do you you don't have the lyrics? Up, I do. do you? Okay, yeah. that. So what was uh, what was going on there? He's talking about the Lone Star State and looking to the east. Yeah, he said you. Could, uh, let me go back because this is kind of an interesting thing. Because I'm wondering what he's talking about. So after that chorus, this is what he says: Every day there's a new thing coming. The ways of an Oriental view. The sheriff and his buddies with their samurai swords. <laughs> You can even hear the music at night, and though it's a part of the Lone Star State, people don't seem to care. They'll just keep on looking to the east. So this is some sort of uh, cultural appreciation going on in Texas. Yes, the, yeah. the sheriff. Has, the sheriffs have samurai swords. It might be like one of those just some weird occurrence that happened to them, and they wrote a song about it, and just left it open to interpretation but you know who knows that's pretty interesting though. partying with a bunch of uh law enforcement types and they whipped out their <laughs> samurai swords who knows you know? that's true that could happen anywhere yeah some drunk policemen they'll take out their swords oh for sure that's why they have them <laughs> there's probably some kind of police versus firemen fencing league i don't know don't they do that samurai they, they... fencing <laughs> Don't they do boxing, or is that not even? I a think. Thing I, 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 is that a rumor from fifty years ago? That's probably true. That there's a there's a competitive, uh, friendly competitive spirit. Between Rich, them. do they still do that? There's a Carter Country episode. He but, keeps uh, feeding us. Uh, answers, there's, there so. is. Yeah, there's one where they the, the <laughs> fire department and the police department <laughs> every year. Yeah. Uh, play against you know some sort of sporting event. I've seen that on. Um, how's that show called oh rescue me with dennis leary oh yeah there well, that's some, probably true then police and firemen hockey games uh, See, rich, rich says to, yes baseball hockey they do it i seem to remember that back in the day my oh, in, in, on long island new york my uncle was a member of the volunteer fire department of the uh oyster bay new york which mm. uh, 
coincidentally is where Billy Joel lives, I believe. I don't know if he lived there then, but uh, and he was the pitcher for the uh, softball team, and I do seem to uh, remember that they would have games against the Oyster Bay Police Department. So um, I'm being told now that uh, the baseball game, Police versus Fire Department, is at the White Sox Park every year. Didn't know that. Hmm. So there you go. Hmm. Wild. <laughs> what? What happened? I don't know. Over there? Oh, I just had to say wild something. Wild stuff. Is that what you're saying? Wild. It's just a wild. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Leave weird. That. Weird delivery. Yeah. <laughs> Very insincere. I, was, I, was, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I was anticipating the music starting up, so I was trying to get it in wild, there real yeah. fast. Wild. <laughs> I was trying to get you to do your Carson impression. I told oh, Rich I would bring it up. But, I yeah. forgot what it was. Well, it's many episodes eh, well, ago. Well, I'm sure you'll come up with something. Oh, good. I, this song maybe was played on The Tonight Show. It probably was, yeah. So maybe you can do an intro okay. afterwards. Oh, good. Or an outro. Yeah, we'll see. I'll invite them to the couch. Oh. <laughs> He's waving them over. <laughs> he, just, he just made their careers. Yeah. Andy's liking this. There you have it. Well, I guess we'll find out officially. Oh, well, we will. But we're going to find out. You know, solid lead playing. You know, nothing like it's going to blow your head off like a Jeff Beck or something back in the day. But you know, and it sounds good, good. Rock and roll guitar playing. Yeah. That uh, ending. That how it kind of just real quick the dun, 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 kind of a build up to the ending. That's yeah. yeah. It reminds me of uh, the ending of Back in the Saddle. Same oh, thing. Yeah. That's right. And uh, it, it, it pretty uh, a little bit of an unusual arrangement being that after the guitar solo, there was just the one chorus and that was it. Yeah. There was no additional verse or anything. Ended pretty abruptly uh, after the guitar solo. So. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to wonder if uh, the original arrangement was longer and then it was... And you Templeman know, strate- in strategically and, for radio or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it's possible, but uh, yeah, that's a that's a staple of classic rock radio, no question. Hmm. All right, I chose this from the listener submission list submitted by Chris Camarado. Ooh, so I'm going first. Sweet surrender or kick in the crotch? I'm giving it a sweet surrender. <laughs> Sweet surrender. Hell yes. Yeah. Enjoyable. Hard for me to say I didn't like it. I was fully prepared to say I didn't like it for no reason, just to be one of those guys. No. But um I didn't think I would like it because in my mind, whatever the doobie brothers are is not something I'm into. But I've heard this song, like I said, I think this is probably the first time I've ever listened to the whole thing intentionally and uh, oh, definitely okay. the first time I've ever listened to it in headphones in my life you know like yeah, I said I'm listening to left channel guitar yeah. <laughs> uh, d- uh, playing and all that yeah so. yep so I appreciate- and Templeman of course was known for that he had the guitars hard pan oh, to right. the left yeah, and with Van, Van Halen, Halen. And he yeah. was a big proponent of that yeah how do, how do you think that ages I never cared for I, it's, it. It's it's too I, much. It, it is too much, especially on Van Halen One. It's like, you know, yeah, uh, it's, it's hard panned. I mean, I get a little bit of a spectrum to get some 
you know width to it but i, I was i was never a, a fan of the hard panning you ever listen to something it's usually like 60s mm-hmm. Where the drums are panned, you're like, what the yeah, hell? Yeah, the, the entire kit is on one yeah, side. It's yeah, so strange. I think a lot of that had to do with that was right when stereo recordings were coming in, and like you had to put it on one channel for the mono version to work. Yeah, <laughs> I think it had, it had a lot to do with that. But yeah, hard, I've never been a fan of the hard panning. And to your point earlier, that certain that's not even touch nowadays anymore everything is slammed down the middle full volume it just looks like a tube like yeah a, like exactly a rectangle looks if like you look at the a, waveform a, a psyllium husk turd is what the uh, <laughs> sonic wave like looks like just a little fade at the beginning yeah. and the end it's like I, I, I love seeing it in my toilet I don't want to see it on the waveform when I'm listening to it no to odd lumps music. like an earthworm in no, the middle no no <clears throat> Nope. perfectly shaped wonderfully compressed <laughs> uh don't want to see it on the oscilloscope mm-hmm. okay who wants to vote next <laughs> i'll go next yeah i'll give it a sweet surrender oh it's sweet surrender hell yes yeah it's uh you know what it's not a song that i ever that i think about very often it's just you know you hear it okay um, really liked it. Really liked listening to it and trying to analyze it and you know comment and everything. And uh, I became a bigger fan of it than I would have expected, just based on trying to figure out what they're talking about with the uh, the sheriffs and their samurai swords. Lyrically, it's th- it's throwing throwing everyone for a loop, mm-hmm. and I I enjoy that quite a bit. Just the whole thing about like. <laughs> it's it's almost like uh like everybody was kung fu fighting or something yeah, like that where it's of. like it's like um <clears throat> there's something from another culture that all of a sudden the people here find very endearing yeah and i i don't know that that's exactly what's going on wild andy <laughs> <laughs> wild um <laughs> um yeah but uh no it's great so i'll go. pass it on over to chris yeah, Sweet Surrender for me, for sure. It's Sweet Surrender! Hell yes! I mean, it's it's for me, it's one I've heard probably too much. I've been overexposed to it, so and I haven't heard it in a while, so it was nice, a refreshing listen to hear it again. But, um, I mean, on, on the Best of the Doobies album, it, it would rank, of the, of the 12, tr- or, yeah, eleven tracks on here would rank near the bottom for me. I mean, I just like everything else on here better, including the Michael M- McDonald cuts. Hmm. I wonder if that's from, uh, <laughs> like you were saying, overexposure, where you kind of start liking the slightly lesser known stuff a little bit more. Hmm. I just think that there's better material on hmm. the the the, the, the uh, best of album. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just it, Andy. If you if you feel like you you want to hear more, I would just I would seriously recommend just take a flyer on the best of the doobies. I mean, okay. Yeah, I don't know how. It, I don't know if you'd really need to go deep into deep cuts uh, necessarily right off the bat, but that's seriously one of the best uh, best of collections that I'm aware of. Mm. I mean, it really covers it and and. And they got two from the first album that Mike, Michael M- McDonald was on, the title cut of Taken to the Streets, and then a song, uh, It Keeps You Running. Okay. Both outstanding. Nothing s- soft or weak about either of those things. Hmm. All right. Pretty sure the hatred for Michael McDonald sent in later, with the specifically with the title cut of the Minute by Minute album. Is that the one with uh, Rick Moranis? Is- <laughs> Michael McDonald. It's possible. Do you, I don't know. Neither of you know that one. Which one? That SCTV sketch with Rick Moranis as Michael McDonald. I've seen it, but I don't remember. Uh, I don't know that I know that one. Yeah. I don't know what song. I can't remember now. But it's basically where like <laughs> he's like you know it's like almost looks like it's a montage of him coming to the studio, but as soon as he gets in. Like the song's playing the whole time, and as soon as he gets in and gets the headphones on, it's the part he sings. 
then he walks out <laughs> and then like is there any sort of true story to that i don't or know is and then just like... it's just weird and then he comes back in and does that part like the next time around <laughs> like runs and like almost misses it that's funny that is but, funny i yeah. just wonder why they picked michael mcdonald like, no idea strange yeah it's on youtube rare footage of michael mcdonald recording backups i mean you could pull it up it's a minute long okay. if you wanted to i will but i can't remember the uh uh song here I'm looking it up on reddit yeah let me pull that up uh i accidentally went to youtube <laughs> <laughs> dr dre and ed lover's website <laughs> oh no yeah <clears throat> or Fab Five Freddy, I don't whichever you'd like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. There's always got to be an ad. There's an ad for something we're already using. Hey, we're using StreamYard, and it's an ad for StreamYard. And uh, there's the algorithm. Yeah. Here it is. Hold on. All right, let me see if I can get this over here. Give me a second. Share this uh, tab here. Yes. Yes. Uh, let's pull that there. Perfect. Let's see. Here we go. Like the wind. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye. Take care. See you next time. So long. It's <laughs> great. Yeah, it's the uh <laughs> Christopher Cross, right? Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I was I was thinking it couldn't have been a Doobie song because he was brought in to do lead vocals with okay. the Doobies. Okay. But yeah, like little bursts of those uh, <laughs> bursts of those backing vocals. Brilliant uh, thing to lampoon in a skit. But like, you know, you hear it in Peg by uh, Steely Dan and stuff. It's like just but these, these interjections of backing vocals is what he was known for. But, but okay. this, I don't think I've ever seen this sketch, but it's I'm getting very heavy uh, cowbell vibes where it's just kind of like this weird, uh, weird, unconventional type of sketch about a recording studio. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're running to the car. <laughs> See, I love that because it's like there in entertainment and music and everything like that. There's the illusion, like in a music video, whatever. There's the illusion that this just happened organically. Yeah, like you're watching an old movie and all of a sudden, um, Bing Crosby just decides to play "White Christmas" off the top of right. his head. You yeah. know, it's like there's this illusion that it just <laughs> some people just uh, in real time create and and record these songs right and you know no work put into it It just kind of happens stroll in yeah i like that he was filling out a time card (laughs) (laughs) i like when he ran to the car there's no need for that (laughs) he was done no need at all (laughs) uh all right well hey guess what all right hammond i got a question for you yes paul stanley needs to know if China Grove is a rock and roll boner classic. What year was this from? Do we ever... I don't think we talked about it. I'm, I'd like to know. 1973. 73, okay. Yep. So. Right when Kiss was getting going. Yeah. I don't hear any influence uh, on Kiss from this. No. I feel like it would be the opposite. Right? At least with early Kiss, remove a lot of this, uh, like the the piano and stuff. 
Yeah. And this is uh, kind of a bright song. Yeah. Like, I think uh, Chris mentioned it's more of a California sounding. Mm. Yeah. I would agree. But yep. It's got that whole sound to it. It's not dark and dingy. No. Like, like Kiss uh, pretty much, you know, based their sound on. Yeah. Uh, my vote's in. Mine's in as well. Mine's in. What's the order, sir? Do the same. Me, uh, Nick, Chris. All right. You can All do right. that. All right. Rock. No roll. Boner. Whoa. And he got it. Got it. Wild. Guaranteed, Weber's a fan of this song. Oh, yeah. This might be his entrance music to a bowling <laughs> tournament. Guaranteed that he's a fan. Come out with a samurai sword. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In a sheriff's yeah, outfit. Yeah. Like, and a gi yeah. on. The big hat like uh, like Jackie Gleason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the sheriff. He also is someone who says San Antonio. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if that was the case. But hey, we did it. Can you believe it? Mm, I can. Well, if you disagree with us, we are sorry. That's just the fucking way it is. One of the rare times there was some serious preconceptions coming in and they were torpedoed, basically. Mm-hmm. It's true. Doesn't happen often. You never know what's going to happen. You know, like we always say, you sit down and take in the song know, as a whole. But, you know, we, we pause it here and there. But you take it in in a different way than how you've normally heard it and give it a fresh start in your mind. Yeah. You're not you're not by yourself in the car. You're yeah. discussing it. Yep. Things happen. Things happen. Got nothing bad to say about this. But I've got a lot of bad things to say about this sponsor. <laughs> Doing that again, huh? No, we can't do that. No. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't cut, do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Cut, Good sponsor. Cut that Good sponsor. Out. Cut that out. No. <clears throat> we'll be right back with the Yardo questions after a word from this delightful sponsor. Oh, yeah. Yards of questions. Motherfucker. I give them. Sing away. Yes. Twenty fifth anniversary watch along. It's gonna happen. Committing ourselves in to December, it. huh? Yeah. All right. Got time to prepare. Yeah, that's that's right. when that movie came out in December of nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Wow. A heartwarming Christmas <laughs> movie. Putting dicks in your face for two and a half, three hours. So there's visible dicks in the movie. Several scenes. <laughs> Not just Vi- visible I- black cock on multiple occasions. <laughs> wow. I thought for some reason in my mind, I just assumed it was man butt and locker. Oh, room. there's plenty of that. But I didn't know there was yeah, penis. No, there's all of it. Yeah. It's a different time. I guess. Oh, I'm looking for a Yardo questions. What looks good? The bar was raised last episode, so I wonder yeah. if it'd be interesting to see if anybody rose to the occasion here today. Okay. Oh, look at this. This is fun. This is exciting. Oh, good. This week's Yardo questions comes to us from West Beach. Oh, hey, Wes. West Beach of the Plasmatics. I thought line. he was uh, the lead guitarist of Winger. Oh, no, that's Reb Bre- Beach. That's his brother. Yeah. His brother Reb. Three, wor- three letter names with E as the middle letter. Reb, Wes. That works. Yeah. All right. Wes says. Oh, he goes right into it, by the way. Good. Question one. This is kind of funny. Chris. <laughs> Oh, no. What is it you want and can't have every day? And same question for Nick and Andy. But hmm. you want but can't have every day? Uh, a million dollars direct deposited into my checking <laughs> account. How's that? That's 
good. This is a, a daily supply of fuck you money is what I would want and I can't have. Easy answer for me. What would you do if you had that money? Pick up a hobby? Start uh, whittling? Well, uh, first order of business would be to stop working. Get a job at Home Depot no. to, to pass your time? <laughs> nope, that wouldn't happen. I'll tell you that. The word job would not be a part of my uh, vocabulary anymore uh and then just the world would be my oyster at that point just do whatever the f i want to do that's the very definition of fuck you money yep nick hmm that's actually a tough question what do you want every day <clears throat> What do you want and can't have every Solid day? bowel movement in your case. <laughs> oh, man. I'll, I'm going to go with a uh, a uh, discontinued item. Okay. Wish I could have a good old PB Max chocolate bar <laughs> every single day. I was going to some snack. They don't, they don't exist. No? No. Some Tato skins or some something? Ta- some uh, Keebler Magic Middle cookies. Oh. What something those? like that. But they, did those have like a soft uh, chocolate yeah, middle? Yeah, yeah, they're almost like a little truffle kind of a thing Delightful. going on there. Did PB stand for peanut butter? Yeah, yeah. I hope so. PB Max. Yeah. Didn't you make a PB Max? I did. I made it for you guys a couple yeah. of years, a couple of Halloweens ago. I'll say for you brought it in here. Yeah. Was that from your buddy Randy? No, that was before Randy. <laughs> I think, uh, or I don't know, it was before I knew about. Wish he was my buddy. Nick's got this buddy. That... I wish he was my buddy. He's. I don't. Uh, it's. Nick's got this buddy Randy who corresponds with. <laughs> <laughs> who does uh, copycat treats on YouTube very nice guy I'd like him to be my buddy I'm gonna say he might be one of the nicest people I've ever seen on the internet yes very endearing since he asked uh, me especially I would say uh, a full night of sleep and pain free days how's that it's good I I could go for pain free days as well things I've not had for years Okay, question two. If you could have any instrument, new, used, or one owned by a famous musician, what would it be and why? Mmm. That is good. Hmm. <sighs> Just to have, like, or not necessarily play or whatever. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I think it's up to matter. you if you want to. Get, get the band back together and play it or you want to just put it in a case it's up to you fiddle around with it at home let the kids throw it around in the yard whatever you want to do <laughs> oh, let me think hmm <clears throat> you've got some nice guitars Chris yeah, I've been downsizing lately, but the ones I've got left are fine. You have know? you been getting rid of some? I have. I've been uh, moving a few pieces. Yeah. Cashing out, if you will. How many do you think at your most, how many guitars do you think you had? At one time? Yeah. Probably, I think my max number was like 15. Wow, okay. Yeah. And what do you think you're at now? I'm um, at seven. Okay. Yeah. Cut it in half, about from the top to pretty much. Yeah, I could, I could, I could go lower, but it's such a hassle to deal with tire kickers and low ballers, and and shipping this stuff is yeah. is always a crapshoot. So yeah. I'm, I'm in a good place at the moment, but. Uh, but boy, which, uh, I, see, I'm trying to think of something that maybe was on an iconic recording or was it used I've, in a live show, something like that. I've got something, a little, if you want, if what you need you a moment. Um, yeah. I was trying to think, like, a type of guitar, if I was going to get a new guitar, what type would I get and for, like, what sort of sound would I want it for? I don't think I would necessarily want, like, a rock electric guitar. And I was thinking, like, what's what's a recording 
that I really like, or a, a player that I really like, that it would be cool to have the guitar they used on. Right, that's where know, my three, mind yeah. is going. So I'm thinking, I'm going jazz guitarist Tal Farlow. Mm. I had to look it up because I didn't know which model he played. Apparently, he played a Gibson ES350. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, give me that. Because <laughs> cause he's got some stuff from, I believe it's the 50s, where I just I just really like the sound of the guitar. Not too bright. There's some stuff in some of the jazz guitar players. I mean, it all sounds great. It's, there's a lot of definition. But when the, the, like, the high E, you know, B string, whatever, when it's too bright sounding, there's, it, it's... I don't know. There's something about it that uh, that kind of puts me off a little bit. It's kind of like um, if you. It's like an old uh, big band recording where you don't want to hear every every little tone. Yeah. Like you want it. You want it to kind of like mesh together. Yeah. There's there's something something to it where the if it's a somewhat limited frequency range, there's something endearing about it. Yeah. And that could be also mics that were used, whatever. But um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. Chris? Um, uh, for some reason, this popped into my mind, and I just think it would be a cool piece to have. And I uh, just, if for no other reason than I would know what ended up happening to it. But uh, the SG Junior that Pete Townsend played at Woodstock and threw into the crowd mm. at the end of their set, just it's in the movie. You know, he he smashed it a, a couple times on the stage, but it didn't break apart. And he just threw it straight <laughs> into the crowd. Mm. And uh, I just wonder what ended up happening to it. Like, who took possession of it? Was there a fight over How did you get out with it? How did you get out with it? Yeah. And then just to, to have that in my possession would be kind of cool. Yeah. Just, for some reason, that just popped into my mind instantly. And I was just really like, yeah. Because that's where my, my mind went the same place as yours it's like uh, something that was used on an iconic performance or recording and that popped in my head but yeah I wonder whatever became of that thing I mean that would be worth big money I'm sure but I'd just like to have it just on a stand like that would you play it if it, were, if it were in playable shape yeah I don't know not necessarily because that's that's kind of where I was going with mine is I'd like to just sit and fiddle yeah. around with it you know yeah All right, question three. Supposing Pod of Thunder didn't exist, what podcast would you like to be a part of and why? And while you think of that, Wes says, thanks for your consideration and keep on delivering one of the best podcasts out there. And please give my best regards to Mom. She was quite entertaining. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Wes. You're a sweetheart. Um... I would say either pick a true crime podcast just because I'd like to make some money and uh, <laughs> and or any of the podcasts that actually ever once did a live show at Red Rocks. I don't know. I don't I don't care which one it is. Yeah. <laughs> just make me a part of that so I could like go on stage at Red Rocks as a podcaster mm. and have the place full. What would you, uh, what do you see yourself doing on a true crime podcast? Uh, collecting a paycheck. <laughs> but what, what, what role in the podcast? I don't, I, the dramatization. Couldn't, couldn't even oh. tell you because I have no interest in that. It's just, it just seems like a slam dunk money maker because, you know, you just, you, your true crime, people just gobble it up. So. I don't know. I guess the reenactments sound fun. I wouldn't have anything to interject, like in terms of the, the commentary about it, because I frankly don't give a fuck about it. But I wouldn't mind being a part of it just for the money. Hmm. Nick's thinking. Yeah, I'm trying to think of uh, what shows. I mean, I, there are a few that I listen to regularly. The Jack Benny podcast. 
Uh, you know what? I, I will say it, a lot of that kind of stuff is just they replay. You know, just this this week we're playing uh, from October second, nineteen fifty three. In Did this they episode, on it? Uh, sometimes I mean I don't know. There's I've never really heard one where it's terribly interesting where they do that. Like, I, so they're just replaying all, or, the original. And some that I've heard, yeah, that that's and it's so it's kind of like I'll just bring up the episode if I want to listen to it. I don't really. Yeah, how do it, they get away with that with the copyright material? I mean, uh, we, we we fall under some scrutiny for that. You know, I, I think a lot of that stuff is, but I think it's so old that it's it's fair I think, use I think a now. lot of it has public into domain. That. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure which has or hasn't, but. It's it, yeah. It's kind of like when there's a news story and you're like, oh, I want to go on YouTube and look up the footage, and there's some dude that you have to look at first who's telling you about what happened because it's his channel. Yeah, it's yeah. like just uh, I don't want this. No, <laughs> I want to know what happened. Just play the. It's footage. like or, w- or like when you're looking on YouTube for videos of like how to fix something. It's like. I'm going to pick the video that's a minute long yes, versus yes. 10 minutes long. Yes. Because what the fuck could this guy be <laughs> talking about for 10 minutes on on how to fix, like, an electrical socket? It's like, give me the one that's a minute long yes. versus the 10 minute. It's like people <laughs> running their mouths about basic household repairs. It's like... Is your life that empty that you you just think that people are going to be riveted your every word about it? Just tell me how to do it. Um, I'll I'll give an answer. It's um, one that I uh, listened to today. I enjoyed the latest episode very much. Probably my new favorite episode. And that's uh, this past weekend, uh, Theo Von oh, yeah. podcast. Do you like the producer or something? Yeah, I know. I, mean, I know he he had he had that guy on there who he would just he he would enjoy the dead air that would come yeah. when he'd ask him a question. It'd be yeah. really awkward. Yeah, I guess I could do that. I could just be the guy who doesn't really have any anything to say when he <laughs> brings it up. Yeah, no, but just it's like fun conversations. Yeah, I don't know what I would do. Just be a third wheel or something. But that'd be a good one. Just something where the conversation's flowing, like like it does here. Do you listen to that every week? No, no not, not every not every depends week. Depends who's on. Yeah, I, I I found this this uh, latest episode to be quite fun. So <laughs> it's fresh in my mind. Good. I've never heard of that show. Yeah. Who runs it? Theo Vaughn. Is he somebody of note? He's a stand-up or? comedian. He's oh, okay. been in some movies and stuff too. All right. He does well. Yeah, he's a comedian. You've probably like, seen him. Theater guy. One of those fellas. Gotcha. All right. Well, thank you, Wes, for your Yardo questions. And if you want to submit a Yardo questions, go to potofthunder.com. Click that little widget and send three questions our way. Read them on the show. But Nick, it's that time. Chris, it's that time. Happened already. Listen, oh, you fell asleep already? <laughs> I could. Listener, it's that time. I'm going to get in that bed. How about this one, Nick? I'm ready. It's in the way he produces. Produces the show. You know it never reduces. The weekly download. I didn't hear your saxophone. It's kind of buried under the vocal a little bit, but it's just... (laughs) Yeah, it's... Oh, yeah. Just those little accents. Yeah, yeah, I remember that from the original. uh, No, I didn't even notice that. And, like, this sounds like cars from, you know, a couple blocks away. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what the saxophone sounds like. Oh, well. Wild. (laughs) Wild.